From Anshe Sfar, Bethel Emeth Congregation, it's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Parshat Ki Tetze, The Pitfalls of War. If we look in the uh, Parshiot of Shoftim and then Ki Tetze, last week's Parsha flowing into this week's Parsha, the end of last week's Parsha, beginning of this week's Parsha, middle, we have one, two, three, four, five. Five cases where the Torah speaks about the pitfalls of war. What happens when you go out to war? We, of course, we don't need to discuss the, the, the notion that when you're attacked, you need to, you need to uh, defend your citizens. Uh, obviously, it says in the end of Bamidbar that we need to conquer the land of Israel. That's no question. But the question is, when you do go out to battle, sometimes you have to, sometimes you want to, you need additional lands, there are various countries, empires uh, have decided over the centuries, and Israel's no different. Maybe they want to expand this territory. And uh, that requires, uh, Sanhedrin requires further, further clarification from the, the judges and the elders, make sure that that's a good decision. But there are times when we go out to war. There's no question that there are times, certainly for self-defense, to conquer the land, to have your own country. There is a value in every nation, every culture in this world, having their own place to live. The question is, what happens when you go out to war? So in last week's Parsha, we had uh, three discussions. One, it said, well, on the one hand, you know, go out to war, soldiers should be valiant. They shouldn't worry. They should be fearless. They should go out and trust in God and go do their job. But there's a pitfall. And that is, there are some people who are just not cut out for that. You can't put everyone in the soldier situation. In Israel, they have profiles. You know, who has the profile to be a soldier? You can't just assume that everyone is ready to go. There, there may be someone who's going to be a great soldier, but not in that circumstance. When they have, when they have a, a new bride at home, they just built a new house. It's not the right time for them to be good soldiers. So you want to be sensitive to the individuals within the context of a very brutal situation where they have to go out and and kill. Go out and, and do your job. Second pitfall of war is discussed in the next section. It says, well, yeah, sure, you want to you're conquering the enemy that's within your country. You're going to have to be very brutal. You're going to have to really conquer, conquer do, do the work that soldiers do. But, first, try to call out in peace. The pitfall is that we think, well, we'll just go out and fight. Well, you always have to exhaust all the other avenues, as they say. So that's Pitfall number two. Third pitfall discussed at the very end of last week's parashah. When you go out to, to a battle for long, long siege, don't destroy the trees. Don't destroy more than you should. Uh, there's the idea of baltashkis, not destroying fruit trees and other things that you might need for your sustenance. So don't forget about the environment. Don't forget about the future needs of the country when you do go out to battle. This week's Parsha opens with the idea of human sensitivity. You may be out at battle, and you may uh, have to wipe out the whole city. Sometimes you have to go in. Uh, America does it sometimes. You go in and you bomb for the soldiers, and people die. But you can't be an animal. You go out there, and uh, don't forget, you, uh, there, are, there are actual people there. It doesn't give you a license to rape can't do that. So there are ways, the Torah says, you take, take a bride home and bring her home, but then then, then when, once, you, once you take her, you have to, you have to take her as a bride. Uh, you, you can't just dismiss her. So you have to treat even the enemy women as human beings. There's still, there are still rules, even in battle. You can't become totally dehumanized. And finally, it speaks about the yated, when you go out to battle, you have to be careful. There shouldn't be anything disgusting there. You should make sure that there are still latrines. You should live like a human being. You don't become a dog when you go out to battle. You may feel like a dog. There are people who were in Gaza for two weeks. They didn't take a shower. But it doesn't mean that you don't have a latrine. You don't make facilities. You don't become an animal. You have to maintain your humanity. So here are these five sections. Three in last week's parsha, two in this week's parsha, warning us of the pitfalls of war. 
And the most, the greatest pitfall not to fall into is to dehumanize the enemy, to dehumanize yourself. You know, recently we had the war in Gaza, and uh, it, was, it was very difficult, very difficult, and there was tremendous war fatigue. You know, before the war, every Jew knew the names of the three victims of the, the abduction, the murder, and Naftali, Eyal, and Gilad. But then, 72, 73 people died in the, in the war. I don't know all their names because they become statistics, numbers. People say, well, only 72 died in the war. 72 children of, of mothers and fathers. 72, some of whom were husbands. Miluinikim, people doing reserve duty. And then recently there was, a, there was a young man, Aaron Sofer. He was lost in the forest, similar to the last, end of last week's parsha. We didn't know what, how we still don't know what happened. How many people were really as concerned about him as they were about the three abducted children? Why not? Because after war, there's a fatigue, a war fatigue, and, and we lose the sensitivity to the loss of one human life. But it can't be that way. The Torah, the Parsha, last, last week's Parsha, that warns us, don't do that. Even in war, maintain your humanity. Maintain the significance of every single human being, even that woman that you decided to take into your home from the battle. Now, we believe that Jews have a right to defend themselves, an obligation to defend themselves. If someone's pointing a gun at my country, I take a gun and I take up arms to defend that country at whatever it takes. If the other, if the Palestinians died as a result of my self-defense, that's their leader's fault. No one says they have to shoot. No one's forcing them to shoot rockets into our country. No one's forcing them to take a position that Israel must be destroyed. No one's forcing them to blow up uh, Jews in, in pizza places and be a terrorist organization. That's their fault. I, I can't take responsibility for that. We have to protect our citizens. If rockets are falling on our citizens, we have a right to say, look, we're going to do something. We, it, we don't have all the solutions. It may not be the right solution, but we're going to do something. The government has an obligation to do something to make sure that a person can live in the southern region of Israel. They have an obligation. But when people die on the other side, that's what a soldier does, that's what an army does, that's what countries do. They defend their borders, and they make sure that their citizens are safe. That's the job of every country. But cannot be desensitized the result of, of a result of war. Yes, human beings on the other side, some civilians, some innocent, died as a result. Some were protecting, hover, uh, they were harboring a terrorist. They're not innocent. Others were completely innocent. Does Israel have a different choice? Can they just allow rockets to fly into their countries? Oh, we have to worry about someone else's civilians. No, we understand Israel has an obligation toward its citizens. Your obligation, every country's obligation is first and foremost to protect their citizens. But let us not become desensitized to the loss of human life. Ah, a couple of thousand uh, Arabs, uh, no big deal. We should, we, should, we should feel bad about it. Not because it's our fault. It's their, their leader's fault. It's Hamas's fault. It's the, the lack of Arab leadership that's their fault. But never should we be desensitized. Ah, it's just, just a bunch of people. There are among them innocent people. Not our fault. There is a tragedy, a loss of human life. This is, these are the pitfalls of war. You become desensitized to human life, desensitized to how a person should behave. This is what our parasha warns us, even within the context of war, even with, as human beings who, by nature, we have to fight wars. We're lucky in America, we don't, we don't have to be drafted in the army if we don't want to be. But it's human nature, it's human condition, there are wars. But nonetheless, we must preserve our humanity, must preserve our environment, must preserve our dignity, we must remember the humanity, even of those on the other side of the fence. Thank you for joining us here at the Anches Fire Beth Alameth Congregation for a discussion of the Parsha. Join us each week for a discussion of the Parshiot, holidays, how-to videos, Judaism for uh, Jewish for dummies, all kinds of series. Take a look. Enjoy. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asby.org.